factory to solve a polynomial equation using the zero product property, you may need to factor the polynomial or write it as a product of other polynomials. Look for the greatest common factor, GCF, of the polynomial's terms. This is a monomial with an integer coefficient that divides evenly into each term. Example two, find the greatest common factor, excuse me, find the greatest common monomial factor. Factor out the greatest common monomial factor. A, 12X plus 42Y. What you would do here is you look at the 12 and the 42, and then ask yourself, what is the greatest number that can go into both 12 and 42? And you're going to find out that that number is going to be 6. So the greatest common factor between 12 and 42 is 6. Then you ask yourself, what is 12 divided by 6? That's going to be 2. Then you ask yourself, what is 42 divided by 6? That's going to be 7. Notice there's no common factors between X and Y other than 1. So your final answer ends up being 6, that's the greatest common factor, times 2X plus 7Y. Notice when you multiply or distribute the 6 back in, you end up with the same thing. 6 times 2, 6 times 2X is 12X. 6 times 7Y is 42Y. Okay, now let's look at B. B, they give us 4X to the 4th plus 24X to the 3rd. 4X to the 4th plus 24X to the 3rd. We do the same thing. We look at the 4 and the 24. What is the greatest number that can go into 4 and 24? That number is going to be 4. Then we look at the X to the 4th and the X to the 3rd. What is the greatest X that can go into both of these? Now, this is going to be kind of easy here. Whenever you have a situation where you got x to the fourth and x to the third, always pick the smaller one. It goes into both. x to the third can go into x to the third, and x to the third can go into x to the fourth. But x to the fourth can go into x to the fourth, but it can't go into x to the third. It's too big. All right, so once again, x to the fourth, x to the third, which is smaller, the x to the third, so that's the one I pick. Now I go through and factor. 4 goes into 4 once. x to the fourth divided by x to the third, I'm left with just x. And then I go to the other side. 4 goes into 24, 6. x to the third divided by x to the third is simply 1. So my final answer here is 4x to the third times x um, plus 6. 4 is to the third times x plus 6. Okay, now for those of us who still may be confused, we're going to show you another way to maybe clear it up more. So once again, see we got 12x plus 42y. We look at the 12 and we look at the 42. What's the greatest common factor? 6. So what you're actually doing is you're dividing both factors by 6. What's 12 divided by 6? 2. Then the x comes along for the ride. What's 42 divided by 6? 7. And then the y comes along for the ride. Let's go to B. I got 4x to the 4th plus 24x cubed. What number is it that can go into both 4 and 24? The greatest number is going to be 4. I got x to the 4th and I got x to the 3rd. I noticed that my bases are the same. So therefore, I picked the, the one with the smallest exponent. In this case, it's going to be x to the 3rd. Now, what's 4 divided by 4? That's 1. What's x to the 4th divided by x to the 3rd? That's x. But my 1 is still sitting in front of the x. Don't forget that. What's 24 divided by 4? That's 6. What's x to the 3rd divided by x to the 3rd? That's going to be x to the 0, which is equal to 1. So my final answer, once again, is 4 times x to the 3rd times x 
plus 6. Over here, notice we didn't worry about the x and the y because they're different. They have nothing in common but 1. Now here, in example 3, we're going to solve an equation by factoring. We're going to use the same technique that we did in example 2, but we're going to apply it to an equation. Notice we got 2x squared plus 8x. We write the original equation, and then we're going to factor on the left-hand side. We do the same trick. What we're going to say is, okay, I got a 2 and I got an 8. What's the greatest common factor between 2 and 8? That's going to be 2. I got an x squared and I got an x. I picked the smallest x, the one with the smallest base. So it's going to be x to the first. That's where that comes from. And then I factor that out. 2 divided by 2 would give me x. Excuse me. 2 divided by 2 would give me 1. And then x squared divided by x would give me x. So I'm left with just 1x. 8 divided by 2 would give me 4. x divided by x, that's equal to 1. So what's 4 times 1? 4. All right, let's do that again. 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. x squared divided by x is equal to x. So I got 1x right there. 8 divided by 2 is 4 x divided by x is 1. And what's 4 times 1? 4. Now we're going to apply the zero property. This is like the a. 2x is the a. x plus 4 is the b. So I get 2x is equal to 0 or x plus 4 is equal to 0. Solving for x here, I divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. I'm left with x. And then 0 divided by 2 is 0. On this side, I subtract minus 4, minus 4, and I end up with x is equal to a negative 4. All right, for those who need clarification, 2 divided by 2 is 1, left with x. 0 divided by 2 is 0. That's a positive 4 there, so here i got to put a negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. Negative 4 plus a positive 4 goes to 0. 0 minus 4 is a negative 4. Okay, now here in example 4, it's very similar to example 3. Solve an equation by factoring. We got 16n squared is equal to 15 times n. First, we're going to make the whole equation equal to 0. And we do that by subtracting 15n. So we're going to say minus 15 in here and minus 15 in there. That's going to leave us with 6n squared minus 15n. All right, for those who need clarification, we had 6n squared is equal to 15n. So I got to get rid of this 15n to make it go to 0. So minus 15n on this side. I got to do the same thing on the other side, minus 15n. So now I got 6n squared minus 15n. Well, these two terms are not like, so we can't add or subtract those. All we can do is represent them. So 6n squared minus 15n is equal to 0. So now this is where we are right here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to factor out the greatest common factor. So first I look at the numbers, 6 and 15. What's the greatest common factor between 6 and 15? That's going to be 3. Now look at my n squared and my n. The bases are the same, meaning there's an n there, there's an n there. But which one is smaller? It's going to be the n. So that's going to be my greatest common factor. So n is right there. So now I go through and I divide. What's 6 divided by 3? 2. What's n squared divided by n? n. What's 15 divided by 3? 5. What's n divided by n? 1. What's 5 times 1? 5. So we got that cleared up. Now we're going to factor both sides. Okay, now we just factored the left-hand side. So now we're going to apply the zero property. So we're going to get 3 times n. That's equal to 0. And we're going to get 2n minus 5 is equal to 0. Don't forget the 3n, that's like your a. The, two, the 2n minus 5, that's like your b. a times b is equal to 0. So that means one of those got to be equal to 0 or both. So we divide both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. So I'm left with this n. 0 divided by 3 is 0. On this side, I got 2n minus 5 is equal to 0. So I'm going to say plus 5. And then plus 5. All right, this is going to cancel out. 
So I'm left with 2n is equal to 5. Come over here to look at this to make sure you got it down. 2n minus 5 is equal to 0. So plus 5, plus 5. So now I got 2n is equal to 5. Divide both sides by 2. And I'm with, I'm going to put it up this way. I'm left with n is equal to 5 over 2. So the solutions of the equations are 0 or 5 over 2. Vertical motion. A projectile is an object that is propelled into the air but has no power to keep itself in the air. A ball thrown is a projectile, but an airplane is not. The height of a projectile can be described by the vertical motion model. The vertical motion model is going to be in our key concept. Once again, get this into your notes as usual. Okay, key concept, vertical motion model. The height h in feet of a projectile can be modeled by h is equal to a negative 16 t squared plus v times t plus s where t is the time in seconds the object has been in the air. v is the initial velocity in feet per second, and s is the initial height in seconds. So s is the beginning height, h is the distance we're talking about, or the height in feet. All right? Get the key concept in your notes. Example 5, solve a multi-step problem. Armandillo. A startled armadillo jumps straight into the air with an initial velocity of 14 feet per second. After how many seconds does it land on the ground? Solution. Step one. Write a model for the armadillo's height above the ground. We're going to use the vertical motion model. H is equal to a negative 16 T squared plus V times T plus S. Substitute 14 for V and 0 for S. So H is equal to a negative 16 T squared plus 14, that was the velocity, plus 0, that was his initial starting height. And we're going to simplify. We get h is equal to a negative 16 t squared plus 14 t. Step 2. Substitute 0 for h. When the armadillo lands, its height above the ground is 0 feet. Now we solve for t. So we get 0 is equal to a negative 16 t squared plus 14 t. Now we're going to factor, in this case, on the right-hand side. We got 16t squared plus 14t. So I look at the 16 and look at the 14. What's the greatest number that can go into both 16 and 14? That's going to be 2. I look at the t squared and the t. Bases are the same, so which is the smallest t? It's going to be just t to the first power. So that's why I got t right there. So my greatest common factor is going to be 2t. Now I factor it out. Negative 16 divided by 2 is a negative 8. t squared divided by t is t. 14 divided by 2 is 7. t divided by t is 1. And then 7 times 1 is 7. Now I use my zero property. Once again, the 2t is like the a, and the negative 8t plus 7 is like the b. So I get 2 times t is equal to 0, or I get a negative 8 plus 7, excuse me, a negative 8t plus 7 is equal to 0. So I divide both sides by 2, and then with t here, 0 divided by 2 is 0. Over here, I got a little bit more work to do, but the steps I should know by now. So I got a minus 7 and a minus 7. And then I ended up dividing by a negative 8. So once again, negative minus 7. Minus 7. That cancels out. So you end up with a negative 8t is equal to a negative 7. And when you divide that out, you come out with t is equal to 0.875. All right, once again, to help out those who may not get it, a negative 8 times t plus 7 is equal to 0. Minus 7, minus 7. You're left with a negative 8t is equal to a negative 7. Divide both sides by a negative 8. Negative 8. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, so you're left with just t. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, and you end up with 0.875. Okay, that should be the last example. So, if somebody uh, get to work, don't forget we do all of the odds. Thank you.